Okay, so that's one of the reasons. And there's, then there are other alternative circulatory routes that also drain venous blood. You know, the bronchial circulation from the lungs also drains directly into the left atrium. So we're also mixing poorly oxygenated blood. So that's why people's oxygen sats are, you know, on average, I mean, at the highest, 97, 98%. Okay. Um, and the Thebesian, so that's about all I really wanted to say about the Thebesian veins. And like I said, and I'm glad I mentioned the valve part because all the other coronary veins do contain valves. Remember, valves are there to prevent back flow, backwards flow, okay? The, 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 the Thebesian veins don't need them just because they're, so, they're, they're small, they're not very long, and blood is pumped directly from these capillaries right into the chambers itself, okay? Uh, Now, one thing to also remember, bear in mind, is that most of the coronary arteries are descending, okay? If you look, the coronary arteries originate along the, you know, in the aortic sinus right above the aortic valve. So, therefore, they have to descend downward to supply the heart with oxygenated blood, okay? But the coronary vein, now that's not with every single coronary artery, but the majority of them, because there are some, you know, like if you look at the SA nodal branch, has to travel up and around the um, surface area of the right atrium to get to the SA node. So there are some exceptions to this. Now, with the coronary veins, it's just the opposite. Most of the, you know, the most coronary veins ascend or travel upward, okay, as they're draining blood from these from the lower chambers of the heart towards the coronary sinus. Okay, but again, there are a few exceptions, such as the anterior cardiac veins, and then there's the oblique vein of the left atrium okay and then there are you now some other insignificant ones as well okay now one thing to bear in mind about coronary circulation or oxygen supply to the heart um, you know when blood is circulating through the body we only use about 25 percent of the oxygen saturation that's actually in arterial blood so that's why we have such a big reserve of oxygen in our veins okay in the heart the heart uses a hundred percent of the oxygen that is circulated through there Okay, the heart is a very metabolically demanding organ. It is constantly pumping with a lot of force and never stops working. So it needs a lot of blood. And these, and these arteries supply the epicardium and the myocardium with very oxygen-rich blood. Okay, now another thing to remember about this is that coronary blood flow is a little different than, than normal circulatory routes in that blood flows through coronary arteries at its highest points during ventricular diastole. Okay, if you guys remember, you know, the difference between systole and diastole, systole or ventricular systole would be when the, vent when the ventricles are contracting and when they're squeezing, they're pushing blood out of themselves and then through these, through these arteries and through these vessels, through the major vessels of the body, and then that's what creates flow. But it's pretty much the op not, I don't want to say the opposite, but it's different in the heart. Okay, and this occurs, this phenomenon occurs because when the ventricles squeeze and they contract, they squeeze and they, and they constrict the smaller, the microcirculation, like the small capillaries and small vessels of the heart itself. So what that does, that creates too much resistance for the arteries or for the blood in the coronary arteries to actually flow. So when the ventricles relax and they're refilling, then the, small, then the microcirculation of the heart can then kind of reopen up and then coronary blood can then pass to the muscle tissue of the heart itself. So that's one, so that's kind of a different circulatory method than, you know, than what you normally think of is when the heart as a pump squeezes and moves blood throughout the body. Okay, so now this is kind of a little interesting question to think about. You know, when you exercise, your heart is pumping with a lot of force quite often. As you know, heart rate goes up, should go up with exercise as a normal response. So therefore, how would the coronary arteries compensate for this? Because we just mentioned that when the heart, when the heart, uh, when the ventricles contract, they squeeze off the capillaries. Okay, they squeeze off blood flow through the capillaries. Not completely, but they create enough resistance to where it's hard to move blood through them. Okay, how do the coronary arteries compensate for this while the heart is actually contracting more and more? I'll give you a few moments to think about this. Okay, the answer is the coronary arteries have to dilate. Okay, the coronary arteries become more dilated during exercise, so therefore it allows more blood flow through them, and therefore the myocardium can get more oxygen. Okay, 
So now let's kind of take a look at these, these major vessels on some models real quick. And then that will wrap up this video. Okay, so as you can see here, this is a model of the heart. Now, you can't really see where these coronary arteries originate because, you know, the atria are in the way and the pulmonary arteries are in the way because the, the aorta is posterior to the pulmonary artery. Okay, so you're not actually going to see the origins of these major coronary arteries. Okay, so what we'll do is we will remove the major great, the, the great vessels here and then you can actually see where these coronary arteries originate. Now this isn't a 100% a accurate representation of this because you can see that these are the valve, that this is to be the aortic semilunar valve here, but these arteries originate below this, okay? So just bear that, bear in mind when you're looking at this. So then as you can see again, this, so let's kind of get our landmark, to, or let's get our bearing straight again. Okay, this would be the right atrium. Again, this is the larger of the two superior chambers of the heart. This is the left atrium. This would be the right ventricle. And then this would be the left ventricle. Okay. And then again, this would be the superior vena cava. This would be the ascending aorta, the arch of the aorta, and then moving our way towards the descending aorta. Okay. And then this would be the, this is the left pulmonary, left pulmonary trunk right here. Okay. So now let's remove these, the superior aspect of the heart. And then again, as you can see, this would be the right coronary artery as it travels along the groove, okay? Again, it's kind of hard to see. If, if you were to actually look at a cadaver heart, you would actually have to lift up the right atrium to see the groove between the ventricle and the atria, okay? But if we lift this, you can see the right coronary artery traveling right, right underneath the right atrium. And then it will branch to form the right marginal artery, okay? Which supplies, you know, again, the right anterolateral aspect of the heart. Okay, and then as you can see, there are smaller branches that come down and supply the right ventricle with some blood as well. And again, you're not going to see the arteries that supply the atria with the heart, because like I said, they're just, they're too small to really see with the naked eye. Okay, and then you have the left coronary artery. And then once it reaches about, the, you know, again, the, where the pulmonary artery is, it will bifurcate, and then it will descend right down the interventricular septum to form the anterior descending artery, okay? And then it will also travel along, again, the left atrioventricular groove, which, and this, this portion of the left coronary artery is called the circumflex artery, okay? Circa meaning circular, okay? And then this would be the left marginal branch right here, okay? Now, let's flip this heart over and take a look at it from the back. Okay, so now we have the right coronary artery traveling around, and then we have the descending I, you know, um, right coronary artery. This descends right down the interventricular septum on the posterior side, okay? And then we have a small descending branch of the left coronary as well, okay? And then as you can see, the, left, the descending portion of the left coronary artery wraps around the apex of the heart, where it will eventually, it doesn't completely join with the, um, with the descending portion of the right coronary artery like this. It forms what's called an anastasmosis, kind of like a small vessel network or connection between them. All these vessels do that. These coronary arteries eventually do that as they come close to each other and meet up, okay? So now let's take, kind of take a look at the, um, the major veins. Again, this would be the coronary sinus. As you can see, this is a large vein. It's big. It's receiving blood from pretty much all of the major coronary veins, okay? Um, and then this would be the great cardiac vein as it wraps around the, and the um, underneath the interventricular or, uh, AV groove, my apologies on that. Okay, and then we have the left posterior ventricular vein as it's traveling up to the coronary sinus to drain. Okay, um, I'm sorry, this would be the left marginal. This would be the posterior ventricular, and then this would be the middle cardiac vein right there. Okay, sorry about getting the veins a little screwed up there. And then we'll flip it around to the anterior portion. Okay. So then right here you would see the another small cardiac vein traveling very close to the right marginal vein. 
and then you would have the, this is where the great cardiac vein begins is right next to the anterior descending as it travels upward and wraps around to meet up with the coronary sinus. Okay, and then again, the coronary sinus empties into the right, directly into the right atrium itself. Okay. And then, like I said, you're not going to see the Thebesian veins just because, like I said, they're very small. You're not going to see them. And, you know, like I said, they originate right in the capillary beds of the myocardium itself and empty directly into the chambers. Okay, thus concluding the, the special circulatory route of the heart itself. Hope you enjoy this and it helps.